This is Sports Zone on Lagos Talks 91.3. What a strike! What a goal! This morning on Sports Zone. <coughs> yep, thank you very much, Cody, and thank you, Femi. Charles, what, what stands out to you? Well, what stories in this one? I came across a statistic which I found really hard to believe, which I haven't really confirmed yet. You know, but the story goes that um, Eba have never scored a goal against the Rivers United in the NPFL. I, I, I mean, yeah, I, that I can, never realized it can't be possible. I mean, that's that's the statistic that's out there, Shego. Uh, and you know, like I said, I still have to verify the information, uh, you know. But but it's it's out there, to be honest. And it, it was a good game as well, because you know, um, Rivers United manager used to be coach at Aimba, where his second in command is now the head head coach. Mm. So it was boy against master, you know, no, something we master. always talk about in the Premier League uh, for City against Arsenal as well. So you know, these are the kind of things that we should be celebrating. And and and, and, in a, and talking about the NPFL, telling all of those kind of stories. Yeah, I think another seminal story is what's going on at Heartland. Uh, in my case, uh, Heartland, 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 Heartland lost I don't, again. I don't know. I, I, to be honest, to be honest, I know, I know it would be a difficult thing to get um, Emmanuel Amunike to speak at this time, but it. What is going on? Because for a man, Heartland haven't won a game this season. Mm-hmm. If, I'm, if I stand to be corrected, but they haven't won a game, you know. And you employ a, a, a manager like Emmanuel Amunike to turn around the fortunes of the club, and it's not happening. There's got to be something wrong somewhere. Is it the quality of the players? Um, does he have a problem with administration? Um, is it the manager himself? Is he not able to get his philosophy? Well, that's a, a, an overused uh, word, but. Is he not able to get his expertise across to the players? I mean, there's something going on at Heartland. And I'd really love to know from Emmanuel Amonike. You know, um, it's it's a really, really sad situation, to be honest. I, I just feel that it's still too early. I understand that the results are bad, but I still think it's too early. Or could it be Nemesis or Karma? It's not Karma. karma. They, they were relegated. You in, know. in Africa, Karma doesn't exist. Who's, ah. You, you reckon? In Africa. Right. Karma okay. is, not a, is not an African word. No, really? Okay. I so, it, there's okay. still time for him to turn things around. Mm-hmm. It's still early. We're still in the first, what, four games? Mm-hmm. But there's still time. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but, yeah, but so. you know what they're saying in Africa? How you, how you wake up in the morning will determine, you know, how your day will go. And for Heartland, you know, it's it's more like, here we go again. You know, deja vu. This It's happening all over again. No matter who you put in charge, it just seems to... And not work, you know. Uh, but like you said, maybe it's too early. I don't. I don't think it is because you've got to hit the ground running, which is why they employed Amunike in the first place. Like I said, it'd be good to hear uh, from the horse's mouth himself. So maybe before the end of the week, if he's willing uh, to speak about the conditions at Heartland, you know, get him to talk to us on the show. But um, this is not what I expected from Heartland. To be honest, I didn't expect this to happen. Mm, mm. Then, uh, what do you think about our uh, young girls qualifying to go to Malaysia, the under-19 team? That's a good story, isn't it? Only the second Nigerian team to qualify for a World Cup. Uh, well. Yeah, uh, exactly. Well. Yeah, well. Yeah, well. <laughs> what is that, well? I try. <laughs> uh, what's that? Is it not a good thing? We want the senior team to do it. Too. You know, it's a good thing. It's a good thing. But it's are we right. there because yeah. we're going, just going to make up the numbers or because we really have a chance to... You know, make a deep impression. I, I don't know. I, I really cannot say. You know, yeah, it's a good thing to qualify for a major tournaments, but in qualifying, you also have to make a good impression. So I think I'll just leave that window open and see how it goes. But I want to give credit. For me, I want to give credit to the yeah. federation. Yeah, Nigeria. Yeah. Look, as in salute. Yes, yeah. they are doing it, and not just for the men. They're doing it for women. I'm okay. talking about the senior team, men, women, the junior team, men, women. They're going out. We're seeing them go for, to regions, to countries. Mm-hmm. Look, for me, if credit doesn't go from anybody else, should come for the NCF. That's the Cricket mm-hmm. Federation. They're doing a great job mm-hmm. at what they do. And credit, yeah, they should, mm-hmm. should get it. That means they're also spending a lot of money. Not just to even fly to one airplane ticket from here to Rwanda. Now imagine flying a full team. At least um, getting constant competition. Um, I, I don't, I mean, it's expensive. It's well over. <clears throat> somewhere it's over a million naira to fly from here to Rwanda now. Can you imagine? Kigali there. Yeah. You understand? And as if you are flying, 
via you know not direct direct flight is almost two million one point something but there's one that you know uh, that's 1.7 why is it that expensive it's, 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 it's state of the economy isn't it that the cost of if, if i could just switch back to the mpf i don't know if you talk about some of the big games there are a couple of games that were played at late into the day including the shooting stars game mm-hmm. right that's Lake salami i just want to say that when we talk about development we're now moving our games to later into the day and mm-hmm. that's very good it's good that we had about what two matches late into the night right at least late into the day not mm-hmm. the regular four o'clock six o'clock they don't play we're having a game starting at 5 30. that means it runs all the way to 7 30. it means that our floodlights are also working and i think it's good that yes, as much as we do stick yes. to our mpf when they do great things we should point it out and say you know what look but no, well. I mean, did, did I not credit the NFF last week for bringing clarity to and our... that was just once. Sorry? Once in like six yeah, months. It's, it's good, huh? but I gave credit. <laughs> once in sorry, once in I give the credit for Monday Night Football this evening. I still get the credit. But then talking... Okay, but let's go back. So let's situate at the NPFL. Um, I'd like... Probably if I'd like, if possible, for you to read the results again. But there's one particular result which stands out for me as well. And that's that's why United coming to Lagos to beat Ikrodu City. There's nothing new there now. It bothers me. Why? I really thought that Ikrodu City could at least they have they already they have they've drawn a game just one game away from home just one game yeah. yeah. So I was looking. I actually had my eyes on that match that should get something out of. So it kind of worries me or bothers me that they didn't pick up anything at all. But it shows that um, you know the MPF is is quite competitive this this year yeah yeah. Son, yeah yeah so um so i beg for benefit of our listeners that maybe went to the if, at the, if, if at this if at this level the mpfl is not competitive then then we have a problem now we have a problem well you know so well you know when we when we speak of competition excitement and you know all the whatnots you know for, for you to have an elite league you've got to have all of this if it's missing then then you're definitely on the wrong tracks you know so i think yeah you know when we talk about away teams winning it's it's something that should be happening in a league that has a level of expertise yeah. you know, let's not celebrate yeah. an away team winning it's I no agree. big deal i agree it's no big deal you know, Tottenham went to United and won 3 0. Oh, really? Really? Wow. So I didn't know that much. Really? Wow. Wow. Ten Ten hard. Hard. wow. To the, the, the level of inexperience that Ikuru City yeah. have yeah. coming into this level of football will always come to the fore. Yeah. You know, so maybe for them, time will eventually help them to understand the rigors of the MPFL. You know, and then maybe if they settle their ownership problems, and maybe things will start to change. But so are you, are, get... are you are you alluding to the fact that the the, the boardroom issues are affecting matters on be. the pitch? Yeah, it could be. Well, they, they do. I mean, we talk about boardroom issues affecting players. You know, in leagues around the world, of of mm-hmm. course, it's it's. I'm I'm sure that it must be having an adverse effect on the Kurdu city. Mm. You don't come into the league and you, you haven't sorted out you know, all the things that concern you at the topmost level. If you have officials and executives and directors, you know, not generally in tandem with maybe the direction of the club or what they are set to accomplish, will it ultimately affect the players? Well, yeah, I, we can say that it's doing so as we speak because, I mean, they scored their first NPFL goal and everyone... On social media, I was talking about it and all the whatnots, but it goes beyond that. You know, teams in Lagos seem to have a problem staying in the NPFL for whatever reason. I don't, I don't know, but maybe we'll get answers to those questions uh, tomorrow on the show. But it's something that really is of great concern, and I think Lagos and the people that love football in Lagos, you know, should do something about it because. The way it's going now, maybe Ikurudu City might also go the way of of all the other Lagos teams. If you ask me, I blame, I, I blame Solu. I blame Solu for all this. <laughs> you know, Solu. You know, when you raise this thing, and, and quickly, just going through my memory to remember Lagos teams, Ikurudu United, MFM, Sporting Lagos, there's always this razzmatazz when they come into the league. Mm. And because Lagos is the commercial Sporting capital, obviously. Lagos. Right, but at the end of the day, they just don't have enough to stay. Because I think I've said MFM. No other team stayed beyond one season. Ikurudu United went back down the first year, right? 
MFM stayed a couple of years, qualified for the Champions League. Well, I'm, 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 I'm just thinking of stages. Yeah. Yeah, I'm, so I'm, I'm, it's a serious problem. This is, this is a serious problem that Lagos is the commercial capital. It's like, imagine say London. There's no London team in the Premier League. Or there's no Madrid team in the La Liga. It's a bit, a bit confused. That that's the point where you naturally get people come to the stadium. You get all those sort of things. There'll be a lot of attention. So I think it's a bit concerned. And long term, I'm sure those who are in Lagos should also think about it. All right. Could you could you read out the? I mean, it's the early days, as we agree. Yeah, it is. Uh, could you, but could you read out at least the nonsense? Four games played. No. Uh, ten games played. No, what I mean. No, how many rounds? Uh, four rounds. Yeah, four. Okay. Four. Yeah. Um, so you that's either, something that's so, something you cannot identify with. I know. How many rounds of games? <laughs> that's what I meant to say. <laughs> <laughs> Early days, but I think with all the money they spent, because it's universal, it's universally believed. Now that spot was not just by Hartlands and getting their clinch that spot. It wasn't just by putting up their hands, but there might have been some level of. Uh, Financial inducement. So, so there's they no say. proof to this. Hey, that's why I say so they say now. Do you understand? But the MPF cleared so, the IMC hey, cleared so it. IMC said it's not true. Why don't hey, you have to believe the so body? They say. I don't know. The body said there was no money hey, paid. Now you just believe the evidence of your eyes. But so they say. Do you understand? It's just said. Some people are you know, whatever. <laughs> but uh, so they say. But um, that UV saw is very interesting. In the top five leagues, um, the top sixteen leagues actually. Top what now? Sixteen leagues. 16 leagues, but if that's the case, Celtic has scored 20 goals and considered done in um in the league, yes, in the league in, yeah. the, in, the, in the SPL. So I don't know whether the Scottish League is included. So they have scored 20 and considered none. Both they and Aberdeen are top in the Scottish League, 20 goals scored, none considered in the league. So Scottish League, that is that is that a football league? <laughs> well, I'm just saying, you know, when it said 16, so I'm sure maybe the so it's top five leagues of Europe, possibly, but um. Then, uh, if you're looking at, um, did you guys did you guys see Victor Simeone's goal? Yes, no, I did. No. I did. Yeah, I saw the first goal. I was watching oh, the game. Man. What what a that a goodness me! I, uh, I was watching Victor the game. Simen, Victor Sime has got to be one of the best strikers in the world. You he's reckon. got to be one of the best strikers in the world. And I'm really, really... I mean, he's got bad behavior. Yeah, yes, you know, every every genius always has some something in their head. Some you know, but it doesn't take away the talent that Victor Sime has. I just want to put this out there, yeah. I watched an interview, um, Ole Gunnar Social's interview, one um, Norwegian People's Assembly or something in Oslo. And... Um, he was reportedly asked, it was not, it wasn't reportedly, he was asked whether he would like to come back to Manchester United. And I'm paraphrasing here, but he said something to the to the extent of that, yeah, he doesn't want to discuss the job where there's a manager in place and all. But if his family asks him to come back, then he would, he, he would come back. As a man ready to uh, serve. And I'm, and I'm told that Oli listens to this program, so Oli, this is to you. That for me, I'd rather that Ten Hag, who lost back to back home games at Ultra 3 0, which you did too, and you got sacked in November whenever he got, when did Ole get sacked again? 20, 20, 20. Is it 21? Uh, yeah, 21, I think 21. So I'd rather Ten Hag spends the rest of his life as uh, manager of Man of Man U than you ever come back there. So that is, I just wanted to put that declaration. Uh, losing to sports is just. Uh, one of our interns said a bad day in the office. It wasn't a bad day in the office. It was just a normal day. You know, the Man United's level of mediocrity is frightening. Compared Man United to Chelsea, you know, those young boys at Chelsea are charming, man. Look at that Copama. First player ever to score four goals in the first half of the game. Absolutely amazing. And no, talking, I, I think you're not being fair. Yeah. I think you're not being fair Don't to sports. To you're not being fair to sports. Oh, no, 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 I'm sorry. I do have, No, um, was absolutely brilliant. The reason why I say you're not being fair to Spurs is that before this game, mm. Spurs in what four of their first five games have considered goals from crosses. Mm. Said piece they'll concede. Yeah, the carriers were very dirty. Yes, yeah. And they've asked the manager a few times. He was also one of the people who said, "Don't trust the pressure. Yeah, yeah. don't trust the English media." He was one who said they are working on it. Mm -hmm. Now, what you could see in that game was 
they worked on those things because to be fair the scoreline could have been maybe five or six no because it's exactly they should have been seven or eight because Vernon missed uh, a couple uh, of yeah, one on one three right like three one on one so it just shows that uh, a manager Brandon Johnson hit the post yeah uh-huh. and don't forget Brennan Johnson had Hassan to delete it over when he could have done better Johnson had to delete his Instagram even show Lanke show Lanke not Solanke had to Solanke. delete his Instagram account because people abused him mm. trolling this year when the managers but even Romero so I think that the same thing could be said about United that look, while Spurs have gone through their dark phase and they are looking better now, United would also go through their dark phase and be better in the future. No. Because remember Ten Hag as a last year, mm. United all the stick, finished the season with the trophy. Eight with a minus goals difference. And finished with the trophy. Uh, this uh, boy has to respect was Haaland has ten goals. United as a club has got five. It's disgraceful. I mean, I don't know what you get on man that you can but you this one you won't wind me up because I clapped when scores. I was happy to see sports destroy United. You can't be a true United fan if you are clapping to see your I opponents beat your team. By there because they will not, they will not. I've disconnected for the club from now. I watch them because I have to, as a football analyst. That's it. I'm totally unsentimental and objective where United, and I can see that the longer we keep the hang in place, the worse for. Them. But Charles, what's your take on the United uh, sports game, and what did you predict anyway? <laughs> you really want to hear my honest opinion about United? Mm, well, what did you predict for a start? You, you, uh, you know, we have a predict- I predicted that I predicted the Spurs win. Really, you did? I predicted United yeah. win. Okay, I predicted so, the Spurs win. I think I got zero this and weekend. It's, you know, it's it's it's, it's no surprise. Mm. It's no surprise. United. You know, I think I think the blame needs to go around. Um, if if you look at the statements made by by um, Eric Ten Hag, yeah, and tries to look for it here, where he says that there was some sort of agreement. Everybody came into a room, everybody, players, management, coaching crew, you know, and everybody came to one conclusion, resolution that look, everybody needs to put the work in, everybody collectively. And also recently, a couple of days ago, you know, the board came out to say that, look, the projection for winning a Premier League title is 2028. Yeah. So it, it is work in progress. It's work in progress. And if there's any truth to, to what Eric Ten Hag said about being the second most, most successful manager to Pep Guardiola in the Premier League is anything to go by, you know, that's work in progress. Because you, you can't wish away a manager who won for you England's most prestigious trophy alongside the Carabao Cup as well. You know, it, it's something that you can go into the bo- into the cupboard and look at and say, look, this is a legacy. You know, if when you mention Tin Hag's name, you can't walk away from the fact that this is what he accomplished. Yeah, but... You know, I, and at it... some level, at some level, the players also have to take responsibility. You know, while they were analyzing the game, they, they, they brought out the number of players that Eric Ten Hag had signed. 16. You know, and said majority of them had been flops yes it's a risk that every manager will take take for instance anthony anthony came into united with very fantastic resume having won titles at ajax voted player of the year you know in the dutch league player of the month a couple of times as well had scored you know goals in double digits for for ajax and then he comes to united and it's not working and and you want to blame the manager how do you blame the manager who else you blame because now? he brought him in no no who else no, you but you brought him in. no it's like, but you brought the player that's why i said sometimes the players also have to bear responsibility you, you come to a big club like manchester united you know and you're expected to perform and it seems like majority of these players seem to think that they've arrived and that's exactly what Mareska said at the weekend. That these young players of today, you score one or two goals in a big game and you think you're there, but you're not because you're still growing. And that's the mentality of today's players, Shegun. And I know it's the responsibility of the club and the manager to sit these players down and tell them that, look, you still have a long way to go. Settle down, knock hold down and get the job done. But you can only do as much. You, can, or you can't go onto the pitch and play the game now. You can't direct the player's footsteps you know, while he's on the pitch. The players also have to bear the responsibility. Um, you look at the number of, the kind of quality that United has. Internationals everywhere. 
you know, who've played at major tournaments. Why is it not happening? Ogate came in with so much reputation. What's yeah. going on there? He was he was termed to be the missing uh, link. Uh, um, Leniero, I mean Yaru Yaru, was supposedly <laughs> um, um, uh, moving to to Real Madrid. And the story was that he rejected Real Madrid because he wanted to play at Manchester United. Where is Yaro Yaro today? He's injured. Delete. Uh, delete. Um, you know, delete, delete, delete <laughs> is on fire. <laughs> delete has played at the FIFA World Cup, has played at the Euros. It has like, so much experience. So what exactly is going on? There's, it's, there's I, only I, a certain level at which you can blame the no, manager. I, I, and I looked at the starting uh, 11, mm. and I'm thinking, okay, so what can anybody else have done in terms of placement for these players? How do you now legislate for a captain who gets sent off in the course of the game? You know, so... You, you, know, how, also Richard, have you know what? Kind of if if, you can, if I can get a word in, yeah? The captain should have been played... Um, this guy, Fernando has been... Uh, whatever his name he has been, He's been Bruno. dreadful this year. Bruno has been dreadful this year. Shouldn't have played... In fact, he's getting sent to the game. He should have been there. No, he have no, selected. no, no. But apart from that, um, Prosco said something. Kept on the, that team lacked coaching, but there's no. Let's read messages. I mean, like I, I agree with Ten Hag when he says in the Premier League currently, what? currently in the Premier League, he's the most successful manager after Pep. I beg, I beg, read messages, please. In England, now I disagree with you, and it's, it's absolute nonsense okay. what he's saying. He's talking rubbish. This is the word is in the cabinet. Um, Ten Hag is a liar. He's just a filthy liar. Please. Mm-hmm. All right. Um, okay. So just to add this message, since Vuki has put it in already, and it was still here, it says Maraska has been in Chelsea for less than three months, and you can see a philosophy and pattern of what he wants to do. Uh, slots going but to you see that mm-hmm. bald head Baba Ajasko at United. There's clueless, no pattern, no philosophy. Nothing. I really want to know what he told United board for them to retain him. Trophies, that's what he did told them. Mm-hmm. Because these other people you mentioned have not won anything yet. Okay, we shall uh, good morning, guys. Khadija from Maryland. Manchester United's next four games. Porto, Aston Villa, Brentford, Fenerbahce. If they don't sack Ten Hag... Mourinho is one of the four games. Ah, they're yeah. in trouble. If they don't sack Ten Hag, United fans will be in for a meltdown. Also, Cole Palmer is the superstar the English media so desperately want to feel for them yeah, to yeah. be. Um, Kolansky so goes to. Ten Hag just threatened my United and say small and small say he does sack him he will go to another club and win trophies and United panicked and signed him again but I'm sure Ten Hag would take a trophy to Ultra for the game then for Chelsea I hope Mareska won't fall for the temptation of building the team around Cole Palmer putting pressure on him will be counterproductive Palmer is a slick player he doesn't look dangerous but he's a spoiler then lastly it's like Manchester City will struggle with our Rodri. Yeah, they will. They have the burner out too, so that's also mm-hmm. a big problem. Wow. But Rodri especially. There's something Rodri does for City. If I even that goal, you know, some analysts for ball, you know, pundits were pointing on the fact that uh, uh, Gordon mm-hmm. uh, wouldn't have been able to penetrate that space, that Rodri would have been covering that space if he had been on the field. Rodri is such a super player. Love okay, um, very, thank you very much, Chris from Jack on We've seen your message about Cardi getting out early. Thank you. <laughs> Morning, guys. What was the criteria for the FASO games? Because I know a school using students that have graduated already in the game. Maybe Cosmos can help out Ola from Songwater. Mm-hmm. All right, we'll get across to him. We'll get the message to you. Mm-hmm. Uh, Bio from Mailand says, Good morning, Sports Zone. It's been a while I sent a message here due to school and poor frequency at last or Joe Campus. What a weekend of sporting activities. Barcelona pounding by Osasuna, as well as my United trashing at home ground. And Bruno Clueless, United captain. Mm-hmm. Cole Palmer reminder to Pep Guardiola that he lost the gem. Um, Liverpool challenging the title undetected. Juventus on beating in Serie A and the only team yet to consider a goal in the top five leagues. Osimhen on the scoring sheet. Um, MPFL continues with more away wins and one more rivers on beating one. Congratulations to Nigeria on the 19 University team for clinching the gold for the World Cup ticket. My name is Bayer from Milan. The only thing Bayer did not put in his message from somebody who is in Ojo campus is the fast food gift. Yeah, funny. And uh, I mean, that was very comprehensive. That was literally the new sound, except mm-hmm. for the fast food games. And congratulations to the American College uh, University of Cairo. Yes. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that uh, yeah. one. Uh, I don't like when people say these things. And I think it's not fair because, look, I understand that the club, see, and when you say it, Ten Hag is a failure, what the. the ma- failure no, now. the manager has tried to build from the back and has brought the personnel to build from the back. Everybody agrees on Nana, good with his feet. There's no one denying that fact, right? 
He has also brought Delete, a player who's supposed to be good with his feet, who played under Ajax there with him, and we all saw it in the Champions League. Now you brought in Casemiro, who when he says press resistance, that's what Casemiro is supposed to be. Supposed Isn't to be, that Casemiro cannot? Casemiro, Casemiro has, he had a good half season, best season, a uh, good first half season, half first season, season. Best, second is set off. Then and since then he's gone downhill. He brought Mr. Mount. Mr. Mount didn't even climb the hill. He has his, his career at United has is yet to start. Who else? Uh, Onana, Dakutaji. Uh, who else? Let's go through. Let's uh, uh, this boy, the striker, Hoyland. Hoyland is still a young player. Uh, yeah, but this time, but it's called is Kapaman. How old is he? Is Jackson Jackson that everybody was highlighting? Jackson scored double figure, fourteen Premier League goals last season. Uh, who else? Anthony, dreadful waste of time. Dreadful player. Dreadful. Um, it's, but it's the same manager that brought in Ganacho to the starting eleven. The same uh, Ganacho that is academy Amad, now. Which academy? We brought him from Atletico Madrid. No, though. no, but not that. Yeah, but, hey, but it's an academy product now. He's, the he, manager he sanctioned the, his move. Had, um, uh, Kobe Meno won the FA Youth Cup now. The manager still brought him from Atletico. Yeah, whatever, but he was his name. Can, name me one successful to have purchase. Name one. Name one. That has come to United. I think Onana for me has Onana has not been. Onana, has, Onana is one of the reasons I will finish with five points. Masrao is looking very bad already. Yeah, yeah, it's not too bad. I delete as well. But basically, I beg right. this show is not the Man United show, please. Good morning, guys. I can't believe you're saying this. Um, Charles was saying Man United have sacked coaches, and that's not the solution. But meanwhile, his Chelsea are notorious for sacking since Todd Bowley came. He has sacked three coaches, but we shouldn't. Mm. He should pack a bag. Mm-hmm. Um, Olushe Jabi goes, Good morning. Now, wow, let me, just, let, me just respond. let me just respond to that. You know, um, the, the kind of coaches that Manchester United have had is nothing compared to the quality that Chelsea have had and have had and have had reason to sack in the last couple of seasons. You cannot, that's why Femi asked a very pertinent question. Which coach does it? Is it that Man United wants as we speak? Because every manager who is anybody in world football has managed at Manchester United. Every player who's worthy of any kind of accolade has played at Manchester United. So, what exactly is it that the, you know? You have to come to realization that maybe other teams are not just sitting back and you know admiring the jersey of United. Like the, the like the days of Sir Alex Ferguson, those days are gone. Um, Look at Aston Villa. Aston Villa have the temerity, and I use that word very carefully, to get the services of a manager like Unai Emery. That's that's what clubs are doing now, getting the expertise of managers and giving them time to get the job done. You can't keep sacking and sacking and sacking. I must uh, say, really? just say sacking managers for me was never something that I that I that I accepted or I came to terms with. Which is why I said when Mareska was employed, I told Shegu that finally we found a manager who can actually do a good job. I've never supported any manager who was at Chelsea post Jose Mourinho. And Chief Valentin knows that for certain. He and I have a discussion every time. I've never supported any manager post Jose Mourinho. For the first time, I'm backing Maresca, no matter what happens, because I know where he's coming from, and you've got to give him a chance to prove his mettle. You can't just... A, 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 an FA Cup and a Carabao Cup, and he's, he's not good enough. Yeah, yeah, but... Then, no, no, but... I'm, no, so, so, you see, Charles, what you're saying, you see, at the end of the day, those are the roots of mediocrity. A Manchester United does not finish eighth in the league. The, the, where you went in a cup does not mark the success of your season. It is a gradual progress. Look at what Arteta is doing in Arsenal. With what? And with what? With what? Arsenal what has only won. What, what has he won? won? What has he won? What has he won? What has he won? But he's becoming, he's running the city closer every year. What FA Cup? Uh huh. What FA Cup? But um, what in how many years? years? He's finished second. Before that back to back season. No, but Arteta finished 8 2. I think I did finish it. Uh-huh. I, I, I don't remember Arsenal uh, concerned. Yes, yeah, so, but at the end of the day, it's picked up. So have you waited for him to go? His first My season, dear, he finished fourth. You know, uh, Ten Hag finished you fourth see, in his first season. Is, is it fourth or third? The truth of the matter is, both of you hate Manchester United. So let's not give. And you are you are delighting in the most useless in the buffoon of a manager. Do you understand? But at the end of the day, we United fans know that this guy is deadly for our club and needs to get out. You understand? That's a 
Good morning. Good morning. This is a real affair. Mr. Mm-hmm. Olafia, congratulations on the hard fought withdrawal for Quara. Well done. We are we go there to win, not to play draw. <laughs> Let me just tell you. <laughs> I'm not we are not imagining how you like this. Ah, to make you go. You can't, <laughs> can't, you can't <laughs> please the people of the world. Yeah, if, if somebody in second position, not collect anything. You collect anything to Chelsea. Mm. Are you telling me the coach is not good? It's useless. Not only really now, it's useless. As a use capital, useless. Uh, useless. I'm going to tell you now. I'm going to tell you now. It's useless. Up top. Okay. Uh, child, Mr. Olaf is good. You're going to be captain, eh? Tell them the truth. Mm-hmm. Let them know. Mm-hmm. A good opinion. Mm-hmm. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Olaf. <laughs> we love you too. You want to be a part of us first off follow us across all social media pages at lagos talks 913 is our handle and of course kindly like share subscribe and make sure you're part of the lagos talks family